Welcome to Love What You Love. I'm Julie Rose. I'm insatiably curious about people in the world around us and absolutely in love with passion and unselfconscious enthusiasm. Every other week, I geek out with someone about the thing that they love, and then I share it with you. Welcome back, or welcome. A couple of quick Love What You Love alumni news bites before we jump into this week's show. First of all, Episode 5 guest A.J. Odasso, the poet and professor who chatted with me about fandom and fanfiction, is debuting their first novel. Published by Dart Frog Books, The Pursued and the Pursuing is a queer reimagining of The Great Gatsby. The novel is available for pre-order now and will launch on September 28, 2021. Also, Aaron Reynolds, the reigning king of swearing, just won the 2020 Webby Award for Social Humor for F and Birds. You can hear all about the F and Bird's origin story and so much more in episode 26. Okay, let's meet this week's guest. Sarah Robinson, who also goes by Shay, isn't what you'd call a lifelong fitness nut. In fact, quite the opposite. But a random and auspicious post on Tumblr completely changed how they think about fitness and strength. In this chat, we talk being okay with being a beginner, MacGyvering your own gym, setting your own goals perfectionists in recovery, changing how you see your body, and so much more. So find out why Sarah loves powerlifting, and why you might learn to love it too. Hello, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked because... You are super into powerlifting, and I don't know a damn thing about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited to learn more about it. So maybe just to start, can you kind of define what powerlifting is? I, I guess I should start by saying I'm also relatively new to it. I've only been doing it for about a couple of years, so I, I might there, there's still a lot I'm learning about it. Right. But basically, there are um, three main lifts. There's the squat. There's a bench press and there's a deadlift. And generally in a powerlifting meet, you you will have three opportunities to do each of those lifts. And um, you'll, you'll get your scores based on that. I haven't actually done a, a meet before, but I know that's basically the way it goes. But yes, it's the three main lifts, squat, bench press, and deadlift. And that's been my, I guess, exercise of choice over the past couple of years. What is it about powerlifting versus like doing CrossFit? What are the differences and why do you prefer powerlifting? Um, well, I actually started out with CrossFit oh, in okay. 2019. Yeah, because I had been looking for um, a new kind of workout. And I, I guess I was I was really tired of just going to the gym by myself. I, I like the idea of having a plan. So I saw CrossFit. I said, OK, it's, it seems really like high energy, something I could do. And then um Basically, what we did in my in the CrossFit gym I went to was um, for the group classes, there would be like the first half would be working on some kind of lift, um, you know, squat, bench, deadlift. It might also be one of the Olympic lifts, which is a different category of lifting that I haven't really gotten into yet. And then the other half would be like some like high cardio interval training. But um, that was where I first had my first experience with a barbell lifting weights, anything like that. And I really, really enjoyed it. So um, once the pandemic hit, I wasn't able to lift for a while because I wasn't going to the gym. But uh, this past, I think it was last September, I was finally able to get back into it. I got my hands on a barbell and slowly built up a, like a really small home gym that I've been working on or basically working out there like three, four times a week since then. It's been a lot of fun. What was it about, like, you were at CrossFit, you're like, oh, this lifting stuff is really awesome. Do you have a history of, of being athletic as a kid? Or, like, what was it? Yeah, it's really funny because I was not athletic at all mm -hmm. growing up. I hated going outside. <laughs> I hated exercise. Like, I remember I remember my parents took me to, they, they took me to do, like, tennis, softball, soccer. I just remember standing there and just being so sweaty and miserable. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know what it is about lifting. I, it might be because um, the way the way you can measure your progress, I think that's what's really gotten mm -hmm. me into it. Because uh, basically with, like, different programs, 
at least the program I'm doing now, it um, it has you doing one of the, the different lifts every day. So one day you might be doing a squat. Then on top of the squat, you might also be doing like other accessory exercises like lunges or um, trying to think of something else that's not coming to mind, like curls or that type of thing. So there are a lot of exercises you're doing to also support the muscle that you're building. And it's really cool to see how like from week to week, how the, the weight you're lifting or squatting is going up. Like um, uh, when, when I first started, it was like, I remember I was doing deadlifts and I was really afraid of lifting wrong and hurting my back. Cause basically, you know, you're, you're kind of bent over and the whole point of the deadlift is to stand up straight. So you're holding the barbell in both hands and then you, then you, you can drop it and let it go and it'll just crash the ground, make a lot of noise. But the whole point of the deadlifts is, you know, stand up straight, good form, keep your back flat. Don't round out. Don't, you know, hurt your spine or anything. And I remember I had a coach who was like really encouraging me to, he, he was like, I think you can, you can lift a little more. You can lift a little more. And I remember I was, I was like deadlifting maybe like a hundred, 175 pounds or so. It wasn't that heavy. I know in the grand scheme of things, a lot of people can deadlift way more than me, but he kept encouraging me to try more. And I remember the day I first deadlifted 220 pounds. Hmm. And for me, that was huge because it's it was more than I weighed. I, I thought, I was like, wow, I didn't think I could ever lift anything like this. And then I started thinking like, okay, if I could do this, could I just keep going up? And it's I, it was really cool to see like week after week how as I was consistently um, lifting and training and getting stronger, how I could look at the numbers and say, okay, these numbers are slowly but surely still increasing or they, they might plateau every now and then, or I might have to like, you know, go back down if I feel like I'm getting a little shaky or not as steady as I should be. But overall, it's really cool to see like, I, I, okay, I can see my progress. I know that I'm getting better and it's a really easy way for me to see like um, what I'm doing basically. Cause when it came to like, um, sports like softball or soccer I guess I didn't really know how to get better and I wasn't really interested in it because I, I wasn't a fan of cardio or getting super sweaty <laughs> I like the idea of of basically just getting stronger because that, that was that was a real big appeal for me with lifting is I, I love the idea of building building muscle and getting stronger what is it about feeling stronger that appeals to you uh, I guess it's kind of for aesthetic reasons. I just like the idea of like being muscular, looking strong. And it's also helped me like with like self-image and weight issues because I've noticed like, okay, if my focus is going to be like with, with fitness, I've noticed that when my focus is on weight loss, I'm generally pretty miserable. <laughs> it's, it's just how it's worked out for me. Like that's, it's never really worked for me that I can just be like, okay, I'm going to lose weight. Yeah. But if I say, okay, I'm going to build muscle and work on, you know, improving my lifts in general. Then it's it's something that I really look forward to and I really enjoy like my workout sessions every day. How long are your workout sessions? Um, it can depend. Like when it's like a lower body day, it could be like an hour or so. Upper body days are usually quicker because I, I I've noticed this is like my first time really focusing on like upper body strength. So I think I'm getting like some, what, what people call like newbie gains. So I'm able to like, I, I feel like I'm progressing a lot faster in upper body than lower body because like my legs are a lot stronger than my arms. So <laughs> as far as legs are concerned, they're already, I guess, where they're going to be for a while, but upper body, that, that those workouts go by a lot quicker. So you mentioned that like you follow a plan. Where did you get that plan and how, how does that work? Oh yeah, so I follow um a program called Stronger by the Day. It's by um a powerlifter that I discovered on on YouTube. Her name was uh Meg Squats. Um basically she puts out or she and her team they put out a um programming every Sunday. It's basically like 4 days of programming plus an optional fifth day. Um and what I do is I just say, okay, there's 4 days of programming. I'll try I'm going to try and work out maybe, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or whatever four days in the week I can find out. And it's a mixture of the main lift and then other exercises to support the lift. So for instance, if I'm doing like, say, a bench press, you know, that's like upper body, 
So there will also be like lifts, lift type things like, you know, um, an overhead press, like, you know, you're pushing a dumbbell overhead or pulling down from like a resistance band, th those types of movements, like just to support the main lifts and build the muscles in other ways too. Can you kind of describe a little bit more what those, what the three main lifts are and kind of what muscles they're working? So for the squat, it's, that's basically a lower body movement. I guess I should add a caveat, a caveat here is like, I'm still learning yeah. what each thing does, but for the squat, it's basically like your lower body. So your legs, like hamstrings, glutes, quads, it also involves a lot of flexibility in your ankles and hips which is something I'm, I've been really trying to work on lately, trying to get like a deeper squat. Bench press, upper body, chest, arms, triceps. For deadlifts, that's more legs, back. I, I, I think some of your arms are involved. Yeah, your arms are involved. Well, yeah, your arms are holding it too. So. <laughs> it involves in that too. So yeah, those, that, those are the three big things. And then for... I, I did mention there were four days of working out. The fourth day, we do a lot of, um, that's like an overhead press day. So that's more just like exclusively arms, basically. Maybe this is a, a sensitive question, <laughs> but like, what are you currently lifting and are you happy with that? And what are your goals like in terms of total weight? Currently uh, with deadlifts, I had to drop a lot because I took a break because of, uh, you know, coronavirus and everything, yeah. but Right now, I'm deadlifting right around 200 because the, those are all the weights I have. I basically, <laughs> I basically got to the end. I was like, all right, well, I'm here. I can, <laughs> I can deadlift all of this. So so it's like 200 pounds. Squat, I, I'm around 153 pounds. Wow. Bench press, that's like 100, 110 or so. And then overhead press, it might be around like 83 pounds, but that, that one is, is like my lightest lift. Basically anything to do with just arms or just arms and chest is going to be my lowest lift. And I, I noticed, I know that's the case with a lot of people because it's, it's more isolated and you can't really use your whole body to support yourself for that the way you can like with a deadlift or a squat. You know, I'm I'm really excited when I can lift both of my five pound weights over my head. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I'm like super impressed right now. That's oh. <laughs> impressive. <laughs> so, you know, you've got 200 pounds worth of weights. Is buying extra weights expensive? And like, you know, setting up a home gym, is that kind of a, a piecemeal process because it costs a lot? Yeah, it's one of those things where... I, I really wish I got into this before the pandemic because the price of barbells, weight plates, home gym equipment has gone up so much over the past uh. year. And it's a lot of things have been out of stock everywhere. Like I was finally able to grab a barbell from um, a company called R Rogue, Rogue Fitness. They, they, they make a lot of quality barbells. And what I had to do was I had, to, I was on my computer in the morning, I just kept refreshing their page to see when it would be in stock. And then the first couple of times I did that, it was out of stock in the time it took me to put it in my cart and go to checkout. Oh. <laughs> so it, it took me a while to get my hands on a barbell. But once I got that, then I was like, okay, now I'm going to need like, you know, a mat. I'm going to need a rack to put the barbell on. I, I'm going to have to find weights. So I was able to find um, a rack thanks to Amazon the mat, I actually got like a um, a horse stall mat from a track uh -huh. store <laughs> because they're cheaper than to get like to get, than getting um an actual gym mat, and they're they're just as durable. And then the weights themselves, actually, my girlfriend was the one who found those for me because I I've been complaining I couldn't find them in stock anywhere. So she went on Craigslist and she found a guy who was actually making his own. So yeah, he 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 made them. They're like cement. He, he covered them with like truck bed liner or something. And they're, they're really rough. I can't really like drop them the way I could with um, weight plates that are made of rubber since they're made of cement, but they, they get the job done. I'm, I'm still able to lift. I still feel like a good workout. So they, they've been like really useful. Providing that you can acquire more weights. What kind of goals do you have? When I was lifting, when I was doing CrossFit, I don't think I, I wasn't really going about it the most healthy way because my mindset was 
really tied up in like the numbers. Like my deadlift when I was doing CrossFit was around like 260 or so. And I was like, I got to get to 300. I had to, I had to be able to deadlift 300 pounds, like all the big guys out there. <laughs> I, I remember like being kind of disappointed with myself. Like when I kind of hit a wall around 260, I was like, oh man, I'm not increasing. And of course pandemic happened. So I wasn't able to lift and I had to drop down. I had to drop way down when I started over again. But right now I'm, tr- I'm really trying not to tie myself to like any specific numbers. My overall focus is just like, okay, I want to be able to do these moves well with good form. So I don't like, you know, pull a muscle on my back or, or anything like that. And I just want to focus on getting stronger, um, doing things with good form and hopefully doing these types of exercises will help me out, you know, as, as the years go by and my body gets older, I'm able to just stay more mobile. That's, that's, that's what my main goal is basically at this point. Kind of overall health and strength and yes, looking good in a tank top. Yes. Ho- yes. That's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you had to stop uh, because of the pandemic, I mean, was it really like starting from zero when you started up again? Oh yeah. I remember I got the barbell. It, it's like, I have I have what they call the quote unquote women's barbell, which is like, was that 50, 15 kilograms? The, the barbell itself isn't super heavy, but I remember like I picked it up and I just thought, oh my god, how how am I supposed to lift this and then put weights on it? I didn't really notice too many changes in my body when I stopped. Like, I just remember like feeling really sad that I couldn't lift, <laughs> mm. just being disappointed because you know the gyms were closed, and then once the gyms opened again, I thought, well, I could go back, but then I don't really know how comfortable I'd be trying to work out wearing a face mask, which I, I mean, I, I could have done it, but I, I guess I just didn't really want to go through the trouble. So I just said, you know, I'll just, I'll just stay home. <laughs> but yeah, w- when I first started again, everything felt very heavy. I felt very discouraged, but I, it was just one of those things where I had to tell myself, okay, this is going to be an incremental progression, just like before. We're just starting maybe a little bit behind where you were before but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get back up there eventually. It's, it's like the name of the, uh, it's like the, the name of the program I'm using stronger by the day. Every, every day you'll get a little bit stronger. It might not always be a linear, linear progression, but overall you'll, you'll get there. Yeah. Do you, so do you like give yourself pep talks? Because that's, that's impressive that, you know, you have this mindset. Do you like, what happens when you wobble and you're like, Oh, <laughs> this isn't working how I want it to work. Like, how do you, how do you get out of that and back into your mindset? Uh, some days I, I'm just kind of miserable about it, especially, <laughs> especially when it's like comes to doing squats. That's currently my lift that I'm, I feel the weakest about. I, I think it's just a matter of me working on stability and, you know, keep my whole foot on the floor, keep my back up, not bent, not leaning over and try not to tilt or fall over when I'm, when I'm squatting. But some of it is just telling myself, okay, well, at, at least we came and we did it. We, we 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 did the lift it wasn't perfect but we tried it other days i'm just like you know what i don't even want to think about this all right we're done moving on to the next thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't dwell yeah. don't dwell yeah and yeah and sometimes i do I, I try not to i try to just think of it like okay well because I, I, i'm trying to keep um working out as something that i do because i enjoy it i, I don't want i don't want to get to a point where i feel like i have to do it I want to just, I want it to stay something that I do because I really enjoy it or out of habit, even that's fine. And it's, it's cool because this is like the first time in my life that I felt this way about anything that's like exercise related. So I, I'm, I'm like, I really want to hold on to this. I don't want to lose this. <laughs> now, have you felt that mindset bleed over into other parts of your life? Like, has it influenced the way you think about other things that you do? You know what? That's a good question. I'm not sure because I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I guess a little bit because I, I've, I, okay, well, a couple months ago, I started roller skating. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, it's been my, I guess, the one cardio activity I've enjoyed. And I, I have found myself, like, on days where I'm really discouraged because, like, oh, I fell or I couldn't do the thing I wanted to do. I couldn't do that turn. I've, I've been telling myself, okay, well, you couldn't do that, but you're also able to stand up a lot longer than you were last time, you know? You, you you didn't fall immediately after standing up. That's an improvement. So I've noticed that like when it comes to like I'm I'm tr- I'm learning that it's good to not not ignore the negatives, but 
don't discount the positives, I guess, when it comes to um, noticing the progress that you're making on in, in different areas. Like it might be, it might not be as much progress as you want to make, but it's still something and it's still better than nothing. So, yeah. Now that we're kind of starting to open back up, you think that you'll go back to a gym or do you, do you just prefer working out at home? It's really funny because I've been thinking about that and I'm not sure. On one hand, I did kind of miss um, going to the CrossFit gym and lifting and having people around to, to you know, check your form, be like, okay, make sure you, you keep your whole foot on the ground or make sure your back straight or, you know, you know, um, you're going in a, your bar is going in a straight line. But also I feel like <laughs> it's, it's more of like a subconscious thing. Like I feel like sometimes when I go to the gym and that people are watching me and I'm being judged or like, oh, she's not lifting as heavy as I can lift or. You know, her form isn't great. I should probably talk to her about it. So I, yeah. I I do really like lifting at home. Like I could see myself going back um, occasionally to maybe lift with a class or with a friend or so if, if I were able to meet other people who are also into lifting. But overall, I, I really, I really enjoy just lifting at home. You know, I can, I can play my music. I can record my lifts without having to worry about anyone like walking around in front of me. And, you know, I, I can have the dogs there. So <laughs> do they help you? <laughs> uh, they, they usually just sleep and, and observe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so not help at all. Okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> so um, now is there like a community, um, like an online community? Uh, well, with the program I'm in right now, they have like a Facebook group. And it's been helpful because a lot of people will post their lifts and say like, okay, can you check my form? Am I doing this right? Or, you know, ask for encouragement or just say like, hey, I'm really feeling discouraged about this. Is this normal? And of course, everyone, a lot of people will be like, yes, that's totally normal. Yeah, yeah. We all go through that. And it's it's nice. I, I don't really participate too much. I have posted like some of my lifts and asked for feedback. And the feedback's always been very helpful. Everyone is very positive and um any criticism they give is like really helpful. So I, I'm part of like one Facebook group for that. I haven't really, I haven't met anyone in person yet to lift with, but I feel like that that would be probably be like a really good next step for like getting motivation and, you know, encouragement. Like if, if I was able to find someone else to lift weights with. Would your 10-year-old self who was forced to go into soccer believe what you're doing now? No, it's, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember, like, I, I I didn't even like going outside to play with, like, the my, my siblings' friends or anything like that. They would be outside playing with their friends. And I'd be like, I just want to sit inside a computer and write fan fiction. So I was, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just... Nothing like, wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, I, I, would, I was always very much... Um, so I'm well. I'm still pretty introverted, but even more so than I was. I was a lot shyer than I would say. So I, I just I, I didn't want to go out. Didn't, I didn't want to meet any or talk to people. And yeah, I, I think this is kind of a tangent. It was just something I thought of. I, I was thinking like, I think one thing that's really helped me really get into or embrace like powerlifting has been like changing my mindset on um, how I see my body. I would say because. I know when I was younger, as far as like body image goes, I always assumed, okay, skinnier is better. You know, the skinnier you are, the the more quote unquote healthy you are, that type of thing. And it was one of those things that was like unfortunately reinforced by like family and of course, you know, a lot a lot of a lot of people, a lot of things you say, even a lot of fitness related people will assume that because you know, you're, you might be, you're a woman that you don't want to get too muscular. Oh no, no. You don't want to get too big. Women don't want that. If you're a woman, you want to be skinny. You want to be toned. And I remember uh, one of the first times I realized that like, that, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I was online. I was on Tumblr actually. And there was this one person who posted like her, a picture of herself flexing. And I saw that picture. I said, you know, I was like, what? I was like, you don't have to be a man to be muscular? What? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to, you know, be like uh uh super like all up on testosterone or anything. You you can just be like uh, a a woman and still have muscles too. 
so I, I think that was like the turning point for me. Of course, this didn't happen until I was an adult. Like, but I, it, would, it would have been nice if it happened earlier. But when I saw that, I was like, okay, so I don't have to be as skinny as possible. Like, like oh, this is interesting. This is a whole new area of fitness that I'd never considered before. So, yeah, it was cool. So, so you 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 film your lifting, and that's just so that you can kind of look back at it and say, you know, okay, my my form wasn't great there. Or that was perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's basically just to check myself since I'm doing this myself. And even with that, I've noticed I haven't, I I, I don't do that all the time. Because there was a, a period of time, like in the beginning of this year, a few months back, where I was recording every single lift. Like I would do a lift, I would immediately go and check it and be like, mm, okay, your hips were too high. You know, your, your arms weren't straight. Your back wasn't flat. You got to do this again. All right. So then my next set, I'm like, do it again. I check again. And I noticed it was really making me kind of miserable <laughs> about my lifts because it said like, okay, I, I basically know, hopefully, some of the basics of what I'm supposed to be doing. So as long as I'm not like going crazy, as long as I'm not doing anything super wild, like, you know, trying to squat with one foot or something, I don't know. It's as long as I'm taking it slow, you know, taking deep breaths, keeping your head up, chest up, as long as, I, as I'm as i I'm aware of what my body's doing and I take a video maybe here or there just to spot check, I feel like I should be okay. And I, yeah. I, I know that's one of those things like it might not work for everybody. I know there are some lifters who will film all of their lifts. Because I, I guess uh, they get a better sense of what they're doing. But I've noticed for me, like, if I do that, I start to get really down on myself and critical. Because I'll compare myself to everybody else I've seen on Instagram who can, like, deadlift 400 pounds. And... Yeah, like a perfectionism thing. Ex yes, exactly. That's been one of those things, again, I've had to learn as I've gotten older. Because, <laughs> like, grow growing up, I was um, homeschooled, kind of pretty independent because I was the oldest of four kids. So... A lot of stuff I did was basically on my own. And I noticed sometimes that I would get, I could get very wrapped up in, um, I guess wrapped up in thinking about something and not doing it. Like when it came to writing, sometimes I'd be like, oh, I have all these ideas. But when you go to time to sit down and write, it's like, oh, I can't do it. It's not going to be perfect. I can't. No, no. I'm going to mess it up. Or, and it's the same thing with lifting. It's like, I noticed like if I were to record or like focus too much on like one thing I would get too wrapped up in my head I'd be like you know what I can't do this but instead I'm like no 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 we can we can we can back off we can lift a little bit lighter if we need to we can you know cut things short maybe switch to a different exercise if you need to but like yeah we can do this so yeah yeah it's it's been it's been a learning process on like not being a perfectionist um understanding like like some days your body's not going to be able to do everything. Like, you know, you might be like, there, there's been days where I've been super cramped and I'd be like, okay, this isn't working. I'm just going to have to cut this short. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's like listening to your body, you know, like overriding your mind who, you know, if, if you were just to listen to your mind, your mind would be like, no, keep going, keep going. You can do it. Just get over it. Yeah. And I've, I've learned that like, if I try to do things like that, that's how I burn out. Like, Mm -hmm. I, there have been times when I've tried to quote unquote get in shape before and it was very much an all or nothing type of thing. It was like, okay, we have to eat only these foods. We can't like, like no snacks, no candy, no, nothing sweet. And that doesn't work. Cause like, eventually you're like, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I need some candy. You know, I need, I need a snack. <laughs> it, it's it, for me, it's been much more beneficial to be like, okay, within reason, this is what we want to do, but we can still have, you know, we can still have the foods we like and just try to also balance it out with healthy foods or that, that type of thing. And I've, I've noticed that that's helped a lot more than basically like let, letting go of the all or nothing mindset or trying to, it's not, it's not completely like I've, I've, I haven't gotten rid of it completely, but trying to not be as all or nothing in my thinking has helped so much in general with like so many areas of my life and not just lifting, but yeah. So you mentioned that you kind of follow a, a program. Um, are there other power lifters that you really admire that you kind of follow their content too? Yes. Oh, the first one, um, she was actually the one who inspired me when I found her on Tumblr. Cora Fitness. She is super cool. She's She does a lot of powerlifting. I think she made her own home gym as well. But 
she's she's able to lift super heavy. She has like she's super strong. I, I don't know. I, I'm just she she's like my, my my big inspiration. Are there misconceptions about powerlifting that you hate? There are some stereotypes about lifters, which one of them at least I conform to. There's there's stereotypes about like oh, you know if you're a, if you're a powerlifter you probably don't like cardio. You know you don't like running or biking, which is true. I don't like running. I don't like being super sweaty. <laughs> so at, at least for me that 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 one is true. There are probably other other misconceptions. I know people have conceptions or misconceptions about women lifting weights. Like in my family, for instance, when I mentioned that I started weightlifting or, or powerlifting, um, I had a family member tell me like, oh, uh, you, you don't want to get too muscular. You know, you, you might, you, you don't want, you don't want to bulk up that much. And, but the thing is like, it's, it's a lot harder to gain muscle. I'm learning than it would be for like someone who, you yeah. know, has a higher level of testosterone or something like that. Like for me, it's taken several months for me to like even start noticing like, oh yes, my biceps are slightly visible. So I, I think the main misconception I've seen is like people assuming that, okay, if you're a woman who's going to lift weights, you're automatically going to like balloon up to like, you're immediately going to be like a bodybuilder. You're going to be huge. And it's like, no, it's actually for body, for like bodybuilders, it's very difficult to even get to that level. So it's not, it's not just going to happen just immediately. Yeah, that makes me wonder, do you know how long Cora Fitness has been lifting? Like, how long has it taken her to get to the point where you were so impressed by her? It's. I think it's been several years. I, I don't know the exact time, but it's, I've been following her for at least a few years. I, I, I know she's been doing it for longer than that. So for a lot of, like, um, a lot of fitness people, a lot of people who go into powerlifting, it will take, it can take years for you to get to a point where you're like, yes, okay, I like how I look. Or, or for other people, it might be shorter. But I know at least for me, it's taken a while. Also because it's not just about lifting. It's also about diet. And I'm still learning about that type of thing, like protein, macros. That, that's all stuff I, I'm, I'm still very much a beginner at. Yeah, it's very much an ongoing thing. Like, I don't know if I, I might get to a point where I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of lifting. Let's go do something else. And I guess as long as I'm not doing it because I'm like, I guess miserable, that would be fine. I'd be like, okay, well, this 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 sport has served its purpose for me. I'm gonna go on and try something new. But the way I look at it now is I'm trying to just make this like a really long term thing. Like, you know, I I like working out four days a week. I like the lifts I'm doing and the other exercises, like the accessory work that I do. And I just want to keep doing that until I guess maybe until maybe another another type of sport catches my interest or until I realize, okay, I think maybe my body might be done with this. Now, what kind of music do you listen to when you're lifting? Actually, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really listen to too much music. I listen more to um, D&D podcasts. So yeah, I basically just listen to podcasts and listen to the story. And it helps make the time go by. So I'm, I'm not like, oh God, is this, this set is taking forever. I'm just like, huh listening to the story. And that also helps keep your brain occupied. Yes. You know, so it doesn't keep scrolling off into other places. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Because I, I know with music, like every time the song will change, I'll be like, oh, this is a different song. And I'll, I'll just think about the song. But like if I have a podcast going, it's like one continuous thing that just goes for like an hour or so. And it just keeps helps me stay focused. If someone who listened to our conversation um, wanted to get started with powerlifting, how would you recommend they get started? Well, I, I can say you don't even really need weights to get started. You could start with just practicing squats, push-ups. Um, if you have like um, dumbbells, like five pound ones, like I have like a pair of eight pound ones that I use for like some other exercises. Those could be, you could use those for um, different exercises. Um, on YouTube, if you search like, um, powerlifting basics or powerlifting form there are a lot of videos that would that that helped me out when I when I was like really starting to try to get my form correct um and I as I mentioned before Meg squats on on YouTube she was a really really huge help because she had a lot of really good pointers on form 
and a lot of tips for beginners um, regarding like um, lifting, diet, exercise, frequency, all, all that kind of stuff. It was, it's been really helpful. And do you have any tips that you've kind of learned in the course of your doing lifting that you're like, don't do what I did or definitely do this. It really helped me. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just like, don't try to do too much too fast. <laughs> like, don't try, like, you, you might see other people lifting super heavy. You might want to also do that. But you have to learn to know when your body is approaching its limit. You know, you don't want to try to do like a, a really heavy squat and then, you know, you're, you're really, really having trouble standing up and you might like pull a muscle or something. So, even if that means like staying super light for a while and only doing light weights, only doing small moves, like that's fine because you can eventually build up to something heavier. So yeah, ba basically just don't try to do too much too fast. Take your time, watch videos, work on form. That, that's what's helped me a lot. What would you say is absolutely the best thing about powerlifting for you? It's It's just... A, a great stress reliever. I really like how I feel when I'm done. I'm like, yes, I feel strong. I, you know, I did a lot of work with resistance bands and I also did a bench press today. I just feel, it makes me feel weirdly accomplished. Even even though all I did was just move heavy things for an hour. <laughs> I, I just feel, I don't know, I just, I just, it just makes me feel happy. I feel, I guess, content. It's like, yes, we, we have lifted heavy things and now we can go on with our day. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness well sarah thank you so much for taking so much time to talk with me about this i've learned a ton and i'm super inspired now oh yeah no problem thank you for speaking to me. i'm glad we had a chance to talk you can find sarah on instagram at underscore shaywise i'll put a link to their instagram in the show notes along with links to cora fitness and stronger every day plus i'll include a list of sarah's favorite nonprofits and a list of mine too Huge thanks to Sarah for sharing her passion with us. Just a reminder that you can find this podcast on Instagram at LoveWhatYouLovePod, on Twitter at WhatYouLovePod, and the website is LoveWhatYouLovePod.com. All of the transcripts for Love What You Love are available for everyone on the website, thanks to Emily White, transcription magician and proprietress of The Wordery. If you need transcripts, reach out to her at EmilyWhite at TheWordery.com. The music for Love What You Love is called Inspiring Hope by Pink Sounds. A link to that artist is included in the show notes. As always, thank you so, so much for listening. Let's hang out again soon. But there's some good in this world, Mr. Furl. And it's worth fighting for.